we've been playing for tens of people for too long. The pressure is just too much to bear now. We just got too big too fast. So I keep trying to convince these fucking assholes that chemtrails are real. I tell them, every time we go outside, look up in the sky, they're fucking there. So when I was roughly 37, I wanted to start a band that teenage kids might like. Um, they have angst and they need to get it out, so why not write music for them to do so? So I took it upon myself to buy a guitar that was way out of my price range and started jamming with a friend, Mike Helms, um, recording some stuff. and then. Some other friends heard it, thought it was pretty cool, and the band started from there. Yeah, so. so Matt Poncho's real late with my boy Skyborg. And you know when douches just roll up in a drive through playing music real loud? So this crap Xterra comes blasting through, just raging this music. But I actually really liked what I was hearing. So I wasn't going to judge a book by its cover. So look at my boy Skyborg. We both really liked what we were hearing, so we waddle out there. California in hand. <clears throat> and they're like, bros, I'm digging these jams. I'm hearing. And they're like, oh yeah, well we need a vocalist. And they're like, hard rock, dung, dung, dung. So I'm like, heck yes, I want in this band. So they're like, give, give us a, a vocal rendition of something and, and you're in on the spot. So I'm like, I only want to be with you. And I was hired right then and there, hopped in the next year and we blasted off. At the time, about five years ago, I was on Craigslist looking for singles in the area. You know what I mean? And there's this ad that said, come get damp. And I was like, shoot, can't pass that up. Clicked on the ad, gave it a, gave it a ring. The rest is history. This is actually the first band I've been in. At the time, my older brother was really into recording stuff and he'd done a couple of local bands around the area. And Jeremiah was coming over a lot and just messing around with them. He recorded two songs for this band called embryotic devourment or something like that. And then he asked me if I ever wanted to play with him and I was like, yeah, sure. But at the time I'd never played guitar, so kind of damp was kind of like learning guitar for me. So I joined damp after Procreator broke up and uh, really what made me want to join damp is I was just sick of playing shows where everyone was moving around and having fun and there was a ton of people. I just hated it. So I just wanted to, you know, play shows where there wasn't any movement and there was constant bullshit. How'd you join the band? Which which time? The first or the second? Amp is a odd name. We get asked a lot where it came from, but really the easiest story is. Our friend's mom back in the day really thought she was smoking, and I think she even had a tummy tuck or something like that. So she was ripped in the ab section and came into our practice space one day sopping wet. Uh, she felt the need to, uh, you know, come by with just a towel on, and she wanted to know what was up, and uh, she's like, I'm wet and we are just like what the hell is going on so we decided that it's suiting for a band to be called damp just based off
My favorite show that we played was our CD release show for The Principle of Law. Um, it was at Davies Uptown. I really think that's when we peaked. I think we peaked. We played a basement show. It's a place called The Shit Shack. And I stepped in literal human shit. I'd say, like, a couple years ago when I posted a 303 drum cover on YouTube. That's when we peaked. We played this show in Salina with Sedlick Ossuary and Conflicts, where there was no one there except this juggalo kid on his BMX bike. And we were so desperate to play in front of people, we begged him to ride his bike home and go get his dad, because his dad was a juggalo too. And he said he'd be back in about five minutes. And he never came back on his BMX bike. And I think that's when we peaked. Uh, hold on a second, I gotta get this phone call. Hello? I've told you to stop calling me. I've already told you to stop printing the CDs. Fine. I'll freaking take your ass to court. Skate Lad Records is going bankrupt anyway. Sorry about that. What was the question? Our worst show was last year when I wasn't in the band. Our biggest tour was when we opened up for Living with the Wolfman and of Zion. On one of our tours, we headed down to Arkansas with Conflicts. Uh, we went through some woods and we got to this beat down trailer that had no windows. It was super hot in there and just nothing was in there. It was just broken glass everywhere and just nuts. Um, the show was actually pretty awesome though. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. And it was the only time we ever sold a camel bucket hat to this 80 year old man. And he just loved it apparently. And yeah. The craziest show we've ever played was probably that one we played with Conflicts. I think the best tour that we ever went on was when we went to uh, Bennett Springs for Sam's bachelor's party. Wasn't a show, but we went fishing. Our most memorable tour for me was when our record label Skate Lad Records sent us out on tour of the band called Amortium. Um, they're actually a Rick and Morty cover band. It made our crowds full of just neck beards and kind of uh, odd smells. The craziest fan that we ever had, or the best fan, depending on how you're looking at it, uh, was this girl in Salina, Kansas, that was drunk as shit and was walking around asking everyone if they wanted to fuck her, yelling, fuck me, fuck me, who wants to fuck me, right? Fuck me. And so she comes up to me, and uh, I really didn't know what to do. I didn't know if anyone else had tips on her. <laughs> Uh, I think the drummer's pretty cute. Damn. That's that band with all the guys, all, all the rednecks, right? I heard, I heard they all voted for Trump. What do you think of Damn? I almost went to one of their shows once. What do you think of Damn? Who? Well, I like Under Oath. Yeah, uh, Damp's pretty good if you're into shitty, uh, garbage, gent, sugar rip-off stuff. I used to think they were really tight, but then Lucas Carpenter joined, and now it's just, like, Beyonce with breakdowns. Yo, Hunter, what do you think of the dudes in Damp? Best dudes. Worst merch. Why are you doing this? We've had about 37 drummers, moving on to 40. I actually started out on drums, but I couldn't afford one of those Britney Spears mics that went over my mouth. And it was easier to find another drummer than for me to drop like $30 on getting one. And now we're on our 29th drummer. When I started the band, I actually didn't even want a drummer. I thought it'd be better to play to a drum machine because- I think the reason why we can never hold on to a drummer because we never let the drummers write their own drum parts, which I think is a pretty common thing. I don't think any band lets their drummer write the drum parts. I can finally understand why they've had 12 and a half drummers.
Skate Lad Records started with my dad and I because we were into the same types of music. Uh, I was raised on Atreyu, Iris from Bear Once, The Smiths, uh, Wilson Phillips, and I had no idea that it would be this big. The only positive thing that came out of being under Skate Lad Records was that we got a very nice Skechers endorsement. Really the only reason that we're even calling it quits is because our record label, Skate Lab Records, cannot keep up with the amount of CDs that needed to be pressed for our pre-orders. Our CDs has been out for a year, but they haven't even been able to ship out one pre-order based on the uh, plastic. Uh, it's a certain plastic that's only found in the foreign caverns of an Indian Ocean. So we really can't get that shipped in more than two months a year. And when we asked them about it, the only offer that they gave us was to switch labels over to uh, a joint label that they have uh, called Jailbait Records. It's actually fronted by Tim Wimbesis, uh, formerly of um, Isolid and Dying. So um, really, that's what it comes down to. So blame them. Our tour bus driver is LASIK went out, but he's also our bass player, so we couldn't continue touring without him. We had to break up because I wouldn't buy a, a Wuhan and Ian wouldn't let me use his snare drum anymore. So now that damp is done, I think I'm just going to go back to Belton. I've had enough of this sh city shit for now. After damp, uh, I think I'm going to move to Australia, down under. Start an ostrich farm, not for the eggs, for the milk. After damp, I'm going to start a business with fat pants and continue to fix lawnmowers off of Craigslist. So after damp, I'm gonna fulfill a lifelong dream of actually becoming an entrepreneur. Um, I mean, I've been at this for a few years now, just kind of under the radar, and I think it's time to present to a Shark Tank or uh, get a, a angel backer. Um, this is a great idea that I've been proposing to for a little bit called Tippy Tits. So more or less what it's for is we all know that guys with blonde tips get the tits. So what it comes down to is to go before you go to the club, you just dip your head into this mixture called tippy tits and it actually bleaches your tips, but only for three hours. So it's not a all the time thing. So when you're at the office, you're not getting tits all the time. You only want that when you go to the club. This solves that problem. Well, my wife and I are expecting, so I'll probably, I just plan on being a father.